Barn Owl Star is an unassuming young class dwarf, small, red, and several billion years older than the Sun. Yet at about six light years from Earth, it has certain fame in some circles. That fame culminated in 2018 with the discovery of a super Earth dubbed Barn Owl Star B, hidden in the star's meagre light. Now, a new study has appeared in the astronomical community that challenges that claim. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video we're going to be focusing in on the closest star system after the Sun and Alpha Centauri, Barnard Star. So, let's get to it. Spain's Ignacy Ribas, with 99% sensitivity, discovered a planet three times the size of Earth with an orbit of 233 days, or 0.4 astronomical units. He used the radial velocity method of planetary discovery over around 20 years and Barnard Star B was born. Unfortunately this lasted for only three years because the graduate Jack Rubin of the University of California noted that stellar activities on Barnard's star seemed to masquerade as a planetary signal that weakened and strengthened over time, something that a planet just wouldn't do. He also found the chemical signature associated with stellar activity around Barnard's star also had a 233 day period, just like the planet. He noted that this was a danger for planet searchers, in particular for those planets that were further out and not close into the stars. So Barnard's star B is now highly questioned whether it even exists at all. For his part, Spain's Rib Ribas claimed to have included this in his initial research. So there is a little bit of back and forth between the two to see if the planet survives more scrutiny. Barnard's star was thought of as a stellar way station in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and indeed has the highest proper motion of any star in the sky, meaning that it's approaching the Sun at a very fast pace, indeed of a radial velocity of around minus 110 km per second. Indeed, as it approaches the Sun, Barnard's star will reach as close as 3.5 light years, although it will never actually become the closest star to us, as the Alpha Centauri system is also moving towards us. If Planet B does exist, its temperature would be around minus 170 degrees Celsius. Now this is obviously far too cold for life to exist, but it's not out of the question, and just like on the Jovian moon of Europa, or perhaps Saturn's Enceladus, geothermal vents could support life on the inside of the planet, perhaps underneath a shell of ice. We also discussed in the Rogue Planets video how the interactions between a moon and a planet itself can create fiction and also lead to internal heating as well as radioactive decay within the core. I hope you enjoy some of the new animations we've added on this video. For a long time now I've debated in my head whether I should use freely available animations such as these, which are obviously of a high professional grade, but some may, may seem less friendly and more generic. Perhaps in the comments below let me know what your opinion is. As things stand I intend to move forward with the channel by mixing the two with some of my own animations and some that are freely available on the internet. Barnard's star itself is a relatively large red dwarf star at M4.0 B category and is not on the smaller side. In red dwarf stars we discussed how red dwarfs can vary in size and indeed what categories meant so don't forget to check that video out. Proxima Centauri, for example, is an M5.5 dwarf and substantially smaller and less luminous. Barnard star, although its radius is not much larger than Jupiter, has a mass of 150 Jovian masses. Interestingly enough, it's actually thought to be a metal poor star with between 10 to 32% of the Sun's metallic consistency, although this has been disputed recently. This puts it in a type 2 red dwarf category of stars, substantially older than the Sun. Barnard's star is however young in red dwarf terms and will no doubt be firing for many billions, even trillions of years to come. In a 1998 flare, Barnard's star, which like Proxima is prone to these events, spewed out a mass that had a temperature of 8000 degrees Kelvin. Although its increase in magnitude was not recorded, for a brief period Barnard's star with this flare would have lit the sky up just like the F or A-class stars of Procyon and Sirius. What a wonder that would have been to see from a distance. Barnard's star is 5.95 light years away, and interestingly, if we were to walk there, it would take almost exactly 1 billion years or 4 miles per hour. In the constellation of Ophiuchus, Barnard's star has also been debated to be a long term target of stellar missions. In 
Indeed, Project Daedalus used the concept of a nuclear fusion rocket at 12% light speed that could have reached Barnard Star in around 50 years of travel, or within a human lifetime. It's known that the habitable zone of Barnard Star is substantially smaller than our own star, spreading just between 0.04 astronomical units out to 0.1 at the very outer limit. We see that if Barnard Star B did exist, it is well outside of the Goldilocks zone. And as I've said on many occasions before, solar flares coming from Barnard Star would also seem at this short distance to preclude any great chance for life. In this graphic, we see the beautiful city of Chicago and the differences between the sun if it were to be replaced by a Barnard star. The sun currently shines at minus 26.7 apparent magnitude, but it's replaced by a Barnard star, which we can see now at minus 20.63 apparent magnitudes. Barnard star will barely light Chicago at all, and indeed only at 100 times stronger than the full moon, it would be the equivalent of the brightness of the sun at the planet Saturn. So Chicago, already known for its cold winters, would begin to experience winter like it had never known before. Barnard star has a radius of just 0.19 solar radii, which means its mass of 0.14 solar masses lead to a luminosity of just 0.004 visual luminosities. Now it does say here though that the bolometric luminosity means that Barnard star energy, a lot of it is expelled in the non-visual spectrum. So it is more of a powerful star than at first glance. Its apparent magnitude of 9.51 means that it's invisible to the naked eye and could be viewed only by relatively strong binoculars or indeed telescopes. The nearest star to Barnard's star is actually the rock red dwarf Ross 154 at some 5.41 light years distance. In Barnard's star sky, the sun would be a first magnitude star just like Pollux is in our own sky and is interestingly also a similar distance from the Alpha Centauri system which would mean that the Alpha Centauri system would be substantially brighter than the Sun, given that the combined magnitude of Bridgecantorus and Ptolemon, Alpha Centauri and B, would be more than the Sun. Sirius remains the brightest star in Barnard's star sky, but would be substantially dimmer than from the Earth, as the two are almost in opposite directions from our point of view. It is thought that between 60 or even up to 80% of stars in the universe are red dwarfs. The second closest red dwarf to us after Proxima Centauri is Barnard's star. Now we've mentioned this planet may be up for debate, but hopefully in the future all the planets around Barnard's star may be found. Its high radial velocity means that in 32,000 years time it will become the closest star to the sun. Maybe by then we will have visited and colonised any potential worlds around Barnard's star. So although at present it hasn't played much of a role in human history, Perhaps in the future it may become a very prominent, if not indeed the most prominent place in our local universe. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out our Brightest Star series where we look at other stars in our local area like Sirius or even the giants of Betelgeuse and Rigel. Don't forget to let me know in the comments below if you've enjoyed the new graphics and visualisations or indeed if you've got anything else interesting to say. I always enjoy reading the comments and I hope you appreciate it as a small channel. Every comment you make, you make can help the channel grow. Stay safe in these difficult times that we find ourselves in and I'll see you on the next one.